Greetings, this is Dyslexi from the Arma Community Group, Shack Tactical. In cooperation with Bohemian Interactive, I'm creating a series of videos that explain some of the basics of Arma 3. In the past, we've covered many concepts of attacking, and today we're going to talk about how to conduct an effective defense. As defenders, the first thing you want to identify is what your ultimate objective is. Perhaps you need to hold an area for a lengthy period of time, or maybe you simply need to delay the enemy briefly before withdrawing. You could be protecting a critical vehicle or structure, securing and defending the upload site in a round of in-game, or maybe it's an important person that you're sheltering from the enemy. Whatever your objective is, your plan will be tailored towards it. The second aspect to consider is the terrain available for your defense. If you have mobility, you'll want to seek out a piece of terrain that gives your team the best possible advantages while simultaneously posing the toughest challenge to the enemy. A village surrounded by open ground is a good example. The buildings of the village will provide cover and concealment, while the enemy will be forced to attack in plain sight. Having good visibility of the area surrounding your defense is important, as you'll want to have as much advance notice as possible in order to react to enemy movements. This is particularly important if you're being attacked by superior numbers. Being able to flexibly shift your defenders around in response to the enemy's movements can help to concentrate your defenses where they're most needed. Whatever your situation is, don't forget to consider it from the enemy's perspective as well. Think of how they might use the terrain to mask their movements. Consider where they might set up units to support the assault with fire. Where would they expect you to have your units situated? Where does it look like your position might be vulnerable from? Try to get inside the mind of the enemy commander and anticipate what they might do, and think about how you can best prepare for it. While assessing the area you're defending, remember to search for and identify any key terrain. Key terrain in a defense is terrain that has some tactical value to it, either for the attacker or defender. This can be in the form of particularly defensible structures, good vantage points, densely concealed approach paths, choke points, and similar. Identifying key terrain at and around the defensive area can help when planning for where to place various assets and focus forces. Every element should have a clearly defined area of responsibility while in the defense. Doing this greatly helps cohesion and avoids having unexpected blind spots. When time permits, map markers can be used to number buildings as well as name streets. Doing this facilitates precise communication. Instead of someone saying that the enemy has breached that building on the corner, one can state that the enemy has taken building two, for example, and instantly be understood. One of the strongest factors of a defense comes in the form of mutually supporting positions when two or more elements are able to fire in support of each other. One of the toughest challenges when assaulting is attempting to take a position that is covered by a supporting position. For instance, attacking a building while a nearby building is able to fire at it. The units attacking the first building can be shot by those in the second, making it necessary to suppress or destroy both buildings simultaneously in order to avoid being cut down in the assault on one. Early warning is achieved through many means with whatever assets a unit finds themselves equipped with. Barring anything else, this can be done with scouts. Units which move out beyond the perimeter of a defense, position themselves near likely approach avenues or on high terrain, and report on the movement, size, and equipment of attacking forces. The ideal scout stays fully concealed from the enemy, supplying information that helps the defense react appropriately. If available, UAVs, such as the Darter Quadrotor, are incredibly powerful observation devices. They can spot the enemy coming from a great distance, follow them, and determine well in advance where the main effort is focused. When using UAVs, remember to keep them out of sight and out of audible range of the enemy. If they don't know they're being observed, the effectiveness of the UAV is greatly increased. Likewise, remote cameras can be used to observe from unexpected positions, including outside of the defended area. A remote camera placed outside of the defended area can allow the defenders to observe an attack from the perspective of the attackers, giving a unique view of the enemy's efforts and making it easier to spot the approach of flanking elements. Defenders will sometimes have the capability to place defensive obstacles such as via the Zeus interface. When used, obstacles should help to shore up the general defenses as well as channel the enemy into areas that are favorable to the defenders. Leave the enemy a way to get in, and in doing so, focus your efforts on that area. Brutal ambushes and traps can be created through intelligent placement of obstacles, as well as keeping people around to observe them. 
Mines can also be employed in the defense and are often paired best with obstacles. Naturally, it's very important to communicate the location of mines to friendly units in order to avoid fratricide. This is best achieved by marking their positions on the map. Mines come in two basic forms, anti-personnel and anti-vehicle. Anti-personnel mines are good for locations where infantry might try to move through, such as alleyways, brush lines, ravines, and similar, while anti-vehicle mines work best on roads, particularly where there are choke points that prevent off-road travel. Armed vehicles can be extraordinarily powerful on the defense. The key to using them effectively is to try to keep them as protected from enemy fire as possible. This can be accomplished by having them fire over walls, giving them narrow keyhole arcs of fire, and moving them from one prearranged position to others as the situation dictates. It only takes a few moments for a vehicle to do significant damage to the enemy. Bring them to bear as needed, but don't hesitate to move them back into protection rapidly after they've done their damage. Crew serve weapons such as machine guns, anti-tank guided missile launchers, and grenade machine guns provide much of the punch of a light vehicle in a smaller, less mobile, but more concealable package. Placing these in key areas can act as an unexpected and powerful counter to enemy attacks, and when needed, the weapon can be packed up and moved to an alternate location. The more difficult it is for the enemy to locate you, the harder it will be for them to engage you. You generally want to set up your position such that you can engage a small arc while being protected from other directions. This is known as a keyhole position. Instead of being vulnerable to everyone in a broad area when you fire, you position yourself such that only those you're shooting at can see you to shoot back. Sometimes you can accomplish this by picking a good building, other times you can make it happen simply by moving deeper back into a room before shooting out of it. When looking for a position, seek out those that offer multiple positions to fire from, as well as a route to withdraw further into friendly held areas. Having multiple firing positions helps to avoid predictability and allows you to engage in several directions, while a withdrawal route lets you avoid being overrun if the enemy focuses on and assaults your position directly. Remember that all buildings are not created equally. Choose ones with thick walls that can stop bullets from penetrating. Also remember that the closer the enemy gets to your position, the more effective their rounds will be at punching through walls. Having buildings which allow you to deploy your weapon from windows and ledges is likewise helpful, as you'll be able to make more effective use of automatic fire from such deployed locations. Remember that as a defender, you'll be moving less than you would when on the assault. Heavier loadouts, more grenades, more ammo, it's all viable, and you can even stockpile supplies and buildings as additional resources. Finally, overhead cover is helpful against artillery and indirect fire. While repeated strikes can demolish a building, having a roof over your head can help to protect you from mortars, rockets, and grenade launchers. Communication, of course, is essential. Make sure you let others know what you're seeing, and whenever time permits, make helpful marks on the map to illustrate what you've seen. Was it troops, a vehicle, or what? How many were there? Where were they, and where were they headed? This sort of communication allows for the overall leader of the defense to be more informed when making decisions as to where to send reserve elements, where to pull back from, and just generally helps the overall conduct of the defense. A layered defense in depth only works when the defenders give ground before they've taken critical casualties. Know when it's time to move further back into the next layer of the defense, and when done properly, this can allow you to engage enemies that are attempting to take and clear your prior position from your new position. Smoke can be helpful for this task, but it isn't essential and it can sometimes reveal your intentions too clearly. When it's time to fall back, quickly rush to the next piece of cover and concealment, and work your way back until you have a new position to fight from. Communicate your intentions to friendly units before you relocate so that they know that your old position will soon be enemy held. So those are many of the basics of conducting a defense in Arma. Planning, creativity, and communication will get you a long way. The rest is up to the individual and collective actions of both the defenders and the attackers. Remember to work together, communicate, and don't make it easy for the enemy. For more community guide videos, be sure to subscribe to the official Arma 3 YouTube channel. For other Arma 3 updates, keep track of the official website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. If you'd like more in-depth tutorial and multiplayer gameplay of Arma 3 and the previous Arma games, I'd recommend you check out my channel here. This is Dyslexi, and until next time, make sure they have to earn any ground they take.